Is there any space, Stephen, for me to have a um, shower? Name down like, like normal. Oh, we put my name down yesterday, and yeah, I got to put your name and, some, every day. and some fella tried to interview me about mental health issues. Do you know what about that? No, I don't. Because do you remember when we first came here, I tried to volunteer, and he said there was no room for volunteers. Is, is that so? It's still the case, I'm afraid. We have a massive oh, list. Who, who called the guy in? Yes, please. Who called the man in to say that I might have had some mental health issues or something? No, he just he just calls in every oh, now and again. He said that he noticed some strange behaviour around me. Is that what he said? That's what he said to me, yeah. I, I don't know. Tina, can you help me out here? Yeah. Um, well, we do Did anybody say, mention that we had some mental or some, some behaviour that was strange? Did they touch anybody? Did they sexually assault well, anybody? Was I singing? Nobody Is that what it was? Was I because I was singing? You're a singer, aren't you? Yeah. Yeah. Is that, is that, that, is, that, is that considered um, strange behaviour? Do you behavior? remember when I, uh, I was in the office and that you said you wanted to see me because you felt you had mental health problems? No, I never said I had mental health problems. That's not what I said at all. Okay, maybe there. Between... I'm not going to speak to you anymore, okay? Because that's just not what I said. And it's not to me. Somebody in the room. Are you my accuser? Are you accusing me? No, we are not accusing anything. But also, Look, we, we get a lot of people coming in to check on all the clients. That there is not, if I never we came here as a client, I came here as a volunteer. Because we have a house and I'm not making any money. We, we always have like, the outreach workers or mental health teams that they come yeah. and did check you, that if everybody needs help. Did you see the form that I signed the other day? And I put a line, straight <laughs> line, so I'm non applicable. We've not, we've not seen Everything's by consent. Yeah. I think this you've probably spoke to the nurse. Is this the Catholic Church's place? This is all with the Catholic Church's place, isn't it? The no, Roman, it's the not Roman Catholic Church. It's not owned by anybody. Next door is no, the it's Roman not owned by anybody. Oh, do we have to read the book? No, we're non denominational. We don't belong to any church. I suggest you put some, uh, some surveillance cameras in here in case So, but we do work with the mental health teams and the nurses. And they visit us on occasion. Do you know what the yeah. mental health people say? That one in every three people is mentally yeah. ill. So anybody that goes to court and is convicted of a mental health issue was convicted by someone who themselves according to the mental health people is mentally ill. Wow, okay. But do you need somewhere then? Because do you I need help with someone, the yeah. outreach? Okay. Uh, did you know that... Uh, Certain sexual behaviours were considered mental illness back in the day. But now it's only because they stopped persecuting these people. And now these people are going around the poor, persecuting the poor. It's in the Bible. Have you ever heard about it? That's why it's not in the Bible. Okay, thanks. Alright, Neil. So what I'd say is be on your guard with people like this, especially if you're poor and vulnerable and you've been uh, thrown out on the streets by the council, they'll hound you until they get you into a vulnerable position or they can put you in a mental institution and pump you full of sorcerers, drugs, to get back <coughs> to what they do. If they take all these 10 people in from abroad, loads of foreigners, you know what I mean, and, all they, and they have the wicked way with the vulnerable, they sexually assault them and all, I know loads of people that were in mental health institutions and they were jabbed in the ash and the stuff they give them puts them out for two days and then when all the other people are asleep in the beds they get in and you can't feel their legs apparently from the waist down which is convenient if someone's gonna rape you and get up on your ass you'll wake up the next day you'll have to be fucked by the whole by every pervert in, in the whole place they could even bring the friend one fellow was telling me that this doctor used to come in to the hospital where he was with, he was a Muslim doctor with a big beard on him and he brought in his gimp nurse, his personal nurse, she wore leather and she came in just as a, um, a leather bondage queen and they dished her, dished out all the, all the drugs and all and then whatever he did and like they injected them in the ass but this is what they done, they played, he told me they played on um, 
and man's male testosterone and he came out and he threw it. He, he stood out one day and he said, your mum was looking at him in the hallway, he stood at him and he says, oh, if he kicks off, we never be able to stop him. What he was doing was he wanted him to kick off to give him a false sense of security so he'd get smart and he played to his young male macho this and then he could jab him up and he could all ride the ass off him. That's what he was saying. That's what he thought. That's what he felt in his heart. So, you know, it's a very dodgy thing to be um, in these places right now. You could walk into a place like this, there's no cameras. You could know and have, they find out everything about you. I'm not saying it's the case, no one could register. Loads of people go missing and they're never found again. This would be the ideal spot with no cameras on a cult, if you were looking at a cult, to grab a person and give them to the chef to cook up and serve to the public. They eat my children like bread and they never call upon the Lord. That's what they say in the Bible.